this spot right here and I'm gonna put my camera here. And it's gonna be like no. Careful. Turn it up. All right. Actually, you know what? If you're following me, I don't need to do that. Cool. All right, we're a little behind because of traffic and my fault and not getting on the road, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started, right? So some of you uh, I know. Who do I know in here? Okay, hey. Hi. We're going to get up here and do it? We're going to get up here and do the, the hakas, man. Dude, your dad still sends me those. Really? He does. He's still, like, when a good one comes out, he still messages them to me. The hakas, you know, when we were doing those, he was, and that's okay, dude, why not? Like, how boss would it be if y'all just came out of your dugout and you're like, ah! No? You guys are like, no, that's, that's... Okay, well, it sounded fun. All right, well, look, if you don't know me, uh, I'm going to just pretend in here like nobody knows me. I'm going to do a normal inter introduction, uh, just give you a little bit of background on me, who I am, why your coach has me standing in front of you, and what the whole purpose of us being here is. Right, so uh, my name is Bill Hoops. I've been doing softball in the state of Florida for just about 15 years. My daughter, like many of you, uh, started playing softball when she was 10 years old. Uh, little league coach got sick. I had to step up and help coach. You know how that works, right, Mike? Right, Coach Mike. Uh, so I had to step up and help coach. Uh, and uh, if you know anything about me or as you learn things about me, anything I do, I, I have a hard time doing it halfway and I jump all in. So... Little League coaching turned into 15 years of softball coaching, which turned into winning a state championship, winning Colorado 9-0, top five in PGF, and helping hundreds of you uh, get to the next level, uh, several of you sitting in front of me right now. So um, my coaching evolution over the years has been uh, one from where uh, you might not have wanted to have a car ride home for, with me when I was a very young coach, similar to maybe some of your family members, to now learning uh, the evolution of athletes and mindset and performance and how a positive workflow and a positive mindset can really change your path uh, for not just now, but the rest of your life. Um, if you've ever been coached by me or played on one of my teams, uh, you know I can hold you highly accountable, have a lot of fun, and I never, ever really stop talking. So, right, right, highly, always, always talking, right? Uh, you, you've had a couple of uh, fun talks with me at my tournaments and things like that, right? So uh, the whole point here is Coach Todd, I, I know him. I used to work with Coach Christy here at Weber uh, between my PGF tournaments and, and a couple other things. We've uh, made a lot of donations to Weber. We've helped build that field out there. So we've built relationships here with the university. Uh, when Coach Todd came in here, He's a real big uh, performance mindset, uh, want everybody to kind of uh, thrive and get by kind of coach. So as I've built what I'm doing, we've kind of collaborated and we've built a four-month program. So I'm going to see you once a month like this in person uh, and once a month over a Zoom, just about an hour on that just to kind of maintain. So I'm going to give you one of these fun little like we're in school packets. Uh, and go over them once in person, and then we'll finish it. I won't get through this today, because uh, hopefully you all are interactive and you're participating. This isn't meant for me just to go, hoorah, shiskumba, we're all going to be great, let's go. Uh, this is meant for you all to participate, interact, talk about real live situations and scenarios, uh, because there's stuff that the game gives you and there's stuff that the game takes away. Would everybody agree with that? Right? Has anybody ever been in a situation where you're standing there in a 3-2 count, right? That magical two outs down by two. I hit the walk off and I came through and I helped my team win the game. Anybody? We can raise hands. It's no big deal. Right? Put your hand up if that's you. Right? So now put your hand way up if that's you. Okay, right? See the difference in effort? If you approach everything that you do like this when somebody says, hey, let's get better, right? Let's, let's participate or we go here. It's just a different in mindset. Anybody ever been in that same situation and watched Strike Three looking? Right? Right? Okay. So now, the, now, right? I say, hey, anybody ever win the game? Anybody ever stand in that spot and be there and absolutely kill it? Get your 240 feet, 60 feet, whatever kind of feet it is. Win the game for your team and you're like, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. No big deal. Hey, ever watch Strike Three looking? Yeah, boy, you know I have. That's me every day. 
right? Why do we jump on that one and bypass the other one, right? So we're going to go over some curriculum. Uh, we're going to go over some fun stuff here. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple different things. I've got some guide points and we're going to rock and roll. So the first thing I want you to understand why we do this four month program is what is the program? The company that I run is called Lead Your Journey because every single one of you are on a journey. Would you agree with that? Right? Would you agree that at some point in time your parents put you in a sport because they wanted you to have fun, they wanted you to have community, they wanted to hang out with friends on the weekend, and then they're like, oh, this girl's pretty good at this. All right, let's keep playing. And then you fell in love with a little bit more, and then at 12s you were a little bit better, and then at 14s they said to you, hold up, wait a minute. It's no longer about the Ricky recruit down the street, but it's about getting recruited. It's about scholarships. It's about having your hands right, your feet right, your head right, head down on the ball, making sure that you're calling this, calling that. Would everybody agree that at some point in time it changes? Right? Why? Anybody have an idea on why it changes? Who said stress? Somebody said stress. Go ahead. Listen, I want you to talk. Do you all know each other? Everybody just didn't show up in green shirts from different places today, right? Right? Okay. Everybody on the same team. Raise your hand if you're a pitcher. Okay, raise your hand if you're a catcher. Raise your hand if you're a first baseman, third baseman. Okay, outfielder. Okay, cool, what I miss? Middles. Middles, there you go. Okay, like the, the most important part, right? Okay, cool, so everybody has played the game of softball. And everybody here is on the same team. All right, cool. Like I know I'm funny looking, even worse when I take my hat off, right? And that's okay, I can look, she's like, ah, oh, right? That's okay. Right? Laugh at me, but talk to me. Because me standing up here by myself, I'm like, okay. It's boring, right? So stress. Let's talk about that. Speaking of stress, Coach Todd's in the house. There we go. What's up? No, I'm just messing with you. So stress. So what about the game brings stress? What about that transition brings stress? Because we could talk about the same transition here. Who's a freshman? Just getting started, right? Hello. Just left the house. Now I'm here. All these people are looking at me. All these rules. Sophomore. Trying to figure it out, watch last year, trying to break into the lineup this year, junior. Okay, I've been here two years, I better be in the lineup, where am I at? Senior. Okay, I only got 50 some odd games, what happens with my life after this? Right, so we're all in that journey, we're all in that transition, so talk to me about stress. Failure. Okay, failure, I'm going to come back to that, let's, let's hit on stress. Oh. Hey, knock knock, who's there? That's you. Oh. I always feel like my dad's going to always check on me. Okay. How? And he's allowed, like, uh, when people yell, I get emotional. Okay. It just makes the whole situation worse. Okay. So I prefer, like, to talk to him and just Right. And my dad, he can yell, like, he doesn't know how to shut his mouth. <laughs> so, so I got it, right? So you're one of those, you're one of those where if I have that 0-3 day, right, I know it's over. Yeah. Why? I already know what's coming. Pops is about to snap my neck, right, and he's going to tell me, how come you didn't hit the ball? How come you didn't work hard this week? How come I'm spending all this money? Why am I going to waste my time taking you here? If you're not going to work hard and hit the ball, I'm not going to be in this spot with you. If you don't do this, it's over in the next six weeks. I'm not paying for another season. I bought a new bat. I bought a new glove. I buy lessons. I do. Come on, people. Can I keep going? Because I will. Right? Right, but that's what we do. This is what I mean about the transition from 14 to that age, right? And from high school to, to here. Well, now you're here, right? So now part of what we're doing is you no longer, I can't say you no longer have that because if you are here and he's watching on TV and he's like, hey, my girl's playing today. And then before the game's even over, he's like, hey, when this is over, you better holler at your boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. So, so you either have internalized that and said, whatever, it is what it is. I'm just going to keep moving. Go ahead, Dad, do what you got to do. And you keep moving, right? But how much better would you be internally, externally, on the field, off the field, with the tools outside of just internalizing to be able to process that? Right? That'd be a lot. That'd be a lot, right? Because, you know, again, everything is an exchange, Right? That hard pressure got you here and you're now here performing and doing what you got to do. But is there a better way to do it? Right? And after being a softball dad, a softball coach, a softball, all of that, that's what we're working on, a better way to do it. So that the girls that are watching you 
Because be clear, a 10-year-old girl is watching you. A 12-year-old girl is watching you, right? You are now where everybody wants to be, right? These 14-year-old girls, when, they, when it becomes their time, these 15, 16, 17, when he goes out and starts recruiting people, now they're looking at you. You have now become the example, right? So that pressure then carries on. Somebody said failure. That's you? Okay. So talk to me about that. Yeah, when you're come on. When you're working hard and you're failing here, and just like personally you know, Right, like we're, and we're going to talk about that in the next hour, right? I have an exercise about talking to a teammate because every single one of you will go up to the girl next to you when she goes 0-3 and, and go, you know what, Sailor, that's all right, girl. I've been watching you. You've been working hard. I know this is your process. It's just a bad day. Don't worry about it, girl. Everybody here's got your back. Girl, we're going to be all right. We're going to see you in the cages this week. Don't worry about it. Every single one of you will talk to your teammate like that. Am I wrong? Right, and then you go home and you're like looking in the mirror and you sound like, Dad, what's wrong with you? You suck. How come you didn't hit the ball today, right? You know coach is going to move you from fourth down to eighth, and then what? You know that other girl, that freshman, yeah, she's sitting here running it, but she coming, right? And all those things start to process. Would you agree? Or is everybody just like, nope, we're good. Everybody, look, they looking over at some freshmen like, yeah, we see you, girl. We see you, girl. <laughs> so, again, the program here and what we're going to be talking about is a lot of being the example, intentional effort, handling failure, because when we, when we first put you in school, two plus two equals four, and in order for you to be an A, you have to get a 90 or above. A B, you're an 80 or above, right? So before you start swinging a bat, we set a standard of what is A grade and acceptable. Then we put you in a sport, and we expect you to process that if I go three or four out of 10, that's just as good as that A, if I only get one wrong out of 10. The equivalent is the same, right? Because in this game, two plus two doesn't always equal four because it's here, 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 right? I'm thinking, I'm a joke, ooh, okay. That's what he was talking about, looking at strike three. It's a whole lot of processing. So handling that failure, if you can't accept small victories, right? Like I got up and I gave an hour more practice this week. That's a small victory, no matter what the result on the field, right? In order for me to get from here to there, I can't just take one giant leap and expect success just to jump out at me. I got to get one, two, three, four, five, six. Every single one of those steps takes me closer to my goal. But along that, the path is not just that simple. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Along that is one, two, three, weights. One, two, three, practice or study for an exam. One, two, three, my mom just got sick. One, two, three, I got to get home because grandma needs me. One, two, three, I'm O for my last aid and coach wants to have a sit down meeting. Right? Those things all weigh into where we're going, what we're doing, how we get there in the process. So, how do we fix a lot of those things? First thing is that everything everybody's taught you right, is good stuff, but no one ever tells you to look internally, ever, right? Work to be a good teammate, work to be a good hitter, work to be a good fielder, work to be a good thrower, work to be on time, work to have good academics, work to be this, right? Has anybody ever sat you down and said, as much as you practice the swing, practice on this thing? Because it needs just as much intentional effort. Because when I hit failure, I got to know that every single day I've been working and I may not see the three for three, the three for four, batting at two, batting, but somewhere along that line, it's going to pay results for me, right? And that's called blind faith and hard work and understanding the things that you're putting in, right? If I can climb the mountain, understand, you're standing here going, if I could just get there. But when you get there, that becomes the bottom of the next mountain. Does that make sense? Right? The journey does not keep going. So 
Talking point, right? We're going to go on the first page here. We're going to talk about intentional effort. You can write things down, take notes if you want to. Uh, this should be filled out with your thoughts and your process before the Zoom. Right, we're gonna go over it now to kind of help you explain it, kind of help you get through it. And then hopefully over the next couple of weeks, you'll find five minutes here, five minutes there and really engage in it. Because here's how this group is gonna work. 30% of you are gonna fall in love with this program. You're really gonna engage and it's gonna help you and you're gonna be like, okay, this is cool. 30% of you are waiting for this meeting to end and you can't wait to get home, right? And you just want it to be over. The rest of you are still on the fence and deciding if this guy knows what he's talking about and are waiting for me to hit some home points for it to make sense to you. See, she knows what I'm talking about, right? Right, I'm not wrong, am I? Right, I'm not, I've been doing this a long, long time. Long time, so let's go over it. Intentional effort, what is intentional effort? Which one am I wearing today? Be the example. What is intentional effort? Anybody, Bueller, somebody in the back. What's up, Jack? I don't know, it just rhymed with back. Go ahead. <laughs> it's putting in um, the time and the work and not just putting it in because coach says you have to or because you know you have to to get playing time. It's putting in the work because you want to better yourself and each swing you're kind of making that swing mean something rather than just getting some flesh off the tee. Yeah. Knowing that it will better you. What's your name? Lexi. Lexi, okay, very good. So, I mean, that's exactly right. If coach tells me, hey, we got batting practice from four to five on Tuesday, right? Okay, and I show up and I have my bat and I have my ball and I've got my glove and I'm like, okay, can't, okay, he said we got somebody going to talk today too. Come on, man, right? I'm just there, right? So when you don't get what you want, stop complaining, right? Just stop it. Because look around, right? I'm sure there's a varsity and a JV team here, right? I'm sure that can go up and down. I don't know exactly how it works, right? But there's a lot of girls, a lot of young ladies, a lot of women in this group. Nobody came here to sit. Nobody came here to hang out. Nobody came here to be in last place. Nobody, in my opinion, I would like to think, would came here for anything less than a natty, a ring, and to do that thing. Am I wrong? Raise your hand if you came here to win a national championship. Okay. And if that's where we're at, right, then that's where intentional effort comes into play. Because when I show up, I have to be intentional about winning a national championship. Do you realize that is just not something that happens? It's not going to just happen. You're not all, no one in the country, I don't care how good recruiting is, I don't care how good you are in the game, it does not happen without intentional effort, understanding my role, my responsibility, how I lead, how I produce, and showing up every single day wanting to get better. Anybody here actually do that? How is all of your hands not racing to the sky? If you got to think about why I'm here, if you got to think, do I put in intentional effort every single day? Girls, women, ball players, bosses, future leaders, future CEOs, future people who take on tasks that could revolutionize and change the world. It starts when you walk in the door here. It starts when you put on your cleats here. Because if you're not doing that, what are you doing? If I'm just, hello, hi, how you doing? Well, nice to be here. I hear they throw balls and hit things. Cool, great. There's a spot over you with the, over there with the other 36 girls. Hi, I know I'm new here, but I heard this is a place where people want to win national champions, championships. That's what I'm here for. Anything else is a waste of my time. Yeah, friendship, building camaraderie, getting a degree, doing all those things, that's all part of college. But the intent when you put this jersey on, the intent when you put these cleats on, when you put that W across your chest, the only intent can be to win a national championship. And if you're showing up with anything less than that, tell him you'd like to play JV, give him some money back so he can go get some players that want to win a national championship, or just create a mindset that says, I can, I will, I must. And if you're in my way of any one of those three things, holla at your girl because I ain't got no time for that. Does that make sense? I'm just telling you, bro. I don't know how I can be so hype about Weber. Maybe because he told me if you get one, I get a ring. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I want rings. I already got one. Sailor and I got the same one. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Boy, yeah. Right? 
I do have a tap for it. I told him, funny story, right? Careful what you say to your players. <laughs> Careful what you say to your players. So 2018, they had just won first state championship, 3A state championship at Admiral Farragut. And uh, something happened, coach left, you know, whatever. So uh, they called me and uh, one of the parents called me and said, hey, we got a spot down here. So I went down, you know, taking over a state championship winning team with the same exact team, no pressure. If you don't win again, well, <laughs> Why not, right? So I told them to put some pressure on myself and to put some pressure on them. I said, if you all, uh, you know, win another state championship, I'll get a softball tattoo. It didn't come out exactly. I was like, I'll get all of your numbers, but that looked like a pepperoni pizza once we designed it. So we weren't doing that. Uh, but I ended up, yeah, 2019, 3A state championship, and then Admiral Farragut Academy. So cool, man. All right, let's keep it rolling. So intentional effort. Like, if you're not doing that if you're not when you wake up in the morning and you put your feet on the ground right if you say to yourself oh i'm so tired oh i don't want to go to class oh no this is terrible like I, I get it we're all entitled to bad days we're all entitled to that uh we're all entitled to a day with a snooze button but that shouldn't be your mindset you got me right because there's a lot of young ladies that woke up on September 1st and didn't get a call. On June 15th and didn't get a call. In their senior year and didn't get a call, right? And they're still sitting at home wondering why. Well, you got the call. You're here, right? Maybe you wanted to go all the way to the moon and you ended up on the stars. Maybe you wanted to go all the way to the beach but you just ended up at the river, right? Maybe you wanted to go to the mountain but you had to stay at the bottom because you couldn't quite get where exactly you wanted to be but you're here now. You're here now. Maybe you woke up every day and green and white is exactly what you wanted to be. Maybe you had hockey in your blood and being a warrior was all you could ever be, right? You're here now. You get to wake up tomorrow and decide, what am I doing? Where am I going? Who am I doing it with? What effort am I putting into it? What responsibility am I taking? How am I holding myself accountable? Right, because it's no longer about mom and dad telling you to get up, get your things, go to the field, do this, do that. Coach is gonna tell you when I have practice, he's not gonna tell you how to practice. That's on you, right? He can tell you how to adjust your hands, but when you're in that eight by three, when you're standing in the moment, when it's you and nothing but that girl 43 feet away who has been training her whole life to put you back in that dugout, you either showed up to practice and you're confident and you feel good in the moment or you didn't and you're nervous and you're worried and you hope that you hit the ball. Bruh. So how do we get better? How do we get better? We get better by this, being the example, right? Leadership is for everyone. It is for everyone, but only a few people who are not afraid to be afraid, who have bravery in their heart, who aren't afraid, right? Go and brush your shoulders off, right? Who aren't afraid to stand up before a crowd and say, this is where we're going. This is what I want. This is what we should be doing collectively. And then taking the feedback of the people in the group and guiding that path, right? Because how do we find success? Anybody know? Because we all have different versions of it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, look, you heard me before? No, I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing, right? We find it through failure. She's exactly right. Because when we attempt to do something, if we're successful, experience. Boom, done. I'm going to follow that path and adjust on the way. But when we fail, experience. Okay, am I supposed to do that? Let me try it again. Oh, failed again. Okay. All right. All right, hit the ball. Okay. Failed again. All right, hit the ball, hit the ball. Did he just call bunt? <laughs> okay, hit the ball, fail, 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 hit the ball. Okay, failure equals experience, experience equals adjustments. Those who can successfully adjust based off their failure and the experience they gain find success. 
Those that cannot sit there and wonder, why is this happening to me? I've tried as hard as I can. I've been doing everything I can. I've been at practice. I've been to workouts. I've been going here. I've been doing this. And I've been complaining about it every single step of the way. I've been upset about it every single step of the way. Right? Intentional effort. Up the level. Turn it up. Are you really giving everything you can? Are you really focused on where you need to be? Are you making the adjustments necessary and needed in order to get success from the failure and experience that you're gaining? And that's how it works, right? So each one of you, how do we become a stronger team? How do we become a stronger team? How do we take this unit from where it is now collectively if we put you all together and make you better? Common goal. Common goal. Love that, right? What is the goal? Right? Does the team have a goal for the season? Like, I can say, win a natty, hey. But have we actually talked about it? Is it on the board? Do we have systems and processes of what we're doing every single day in order to achieve that, believe that, and get to it? Or are we just going, yep, somebody said a natty, we gonna do this. Hey, that, yep, yep, that's a natty. Okay, nope, that's just a nat. you know. You understand what I'm saying? Right, it takes intentional effort. Intentional effort. So each one of you, here's how you make the team better. Right? It starts internally. It starts with you. Right? It starts with you. That's how it is. The ball gets hit to you. I got to be the best fielder. You got to pitch the ball. I got to be the best pitcher. You got to catch the ball. I got to have the best pop time. You got to hit the ball. I got to have the best batting average, on base percentage, quality at bats. You got to steal the base. My run time has got to be here. I got to be working on this, that, and everything else. So how do I get better? I'm the example. Every single day, when he says show up to weights, I'm working hard. My legs are, you understand what I'm saying? My back is hurting. My arms are hurting. I'm sweating, right? The trainer is like, what has gotten into her? She is absolutely killing it. But you wake up five minutes before weights. You grab a coffee. You grab a Starbucks. You grab a Dunkin' Donuts, right? And you go, oh, we're going to get better today. <sighs> yeah. Whew. It's a show-up mentality. You're here. Cool. You got the scholarship. What you going to do with it? What you going to do with it? Are you going to show up every day? Are you going to be better? Are you going to be the example? Are you going to give intentional effort? That's how we get better. Make sense? Anybody disagree with that? Y'all look sad, like, I don't know what he's talking about. Like, dude, this is exciting stuff. Like, if you're listening to what I'm saying, you're either saying to yourself, yup, I'm locked in, I'm doing this every day, everybody get, get out of my way. You're going, okay, I think about that, I do some things like that, but this dude's a little crazy, I don't know if I'm really doing all that. And then some of you are like, man, if that's what it takes, I, how did I get here, where, where am I, right? So you have to figure out who you are in that process, and how are you going to turn it up? Catchers, okay, keep your hands up. Pitchers, okay, keep your hands up. Everybody else, shortstops, middles, right? Okay, now if you're the best at your position on this team, you're the number one kid in your position, leave your hand up. Interesting, okay. Here, I'm going to say it again, ready? Everybody put your hand up. That's okay, girl. I'm here with you. I want to make sure we're all on the same page, right? Okay. Lee, here, come on. Whoop. Big jump. Hands up. Okay. Now raise them this way. Hey. Oh, no. Okay. Seriously, keep your hand up if, you are, if you're the best in your position on this team. No one on this team is better than you in your position. Keep your hand up. Okay. Cool. I like it. Everybody put your hands down. Okay, so what did we just learn? Who, who the good people are, right? No, right? No, confidence is key, okay? If I walked in here, right? I just walked in here like I own the room, right? Half of you, I have no idea who you are. I got this big old camera in my face, right? First time Jordan and I are working together, right? I've known these guys professionally forever. They're putting their necks on the line in order to bring me out here, hoping that we all do a good job, right? Do you know who the best speaker in the world is <laughs> fortunate for you he's right here right and even if I'm not when I show up today you are not going to know that I think anything else because it's a mindset it's a mentality 
right? If you don't show up to your position, I don't care if you're a freshman and there's four pitchers in front of you and you know in your mind you might not see a single live pitch all year long. Okay. But when I ask you who's the best pitcher on the Weber pitching staff, if you go, well, it's her and her and her and her and no, it's you. It is 100% you. Yeah, she might be out pitching you right now. She might have three years of experience. But if you don't show up in that moment, I'm here at practice, right? And I am the best pitcher right here. Because she can't throw your reps and you can't throw hers. So in your mind, it don't matter how good she is because you're the best and that's what you're working on. And that's how everybody here collectively gets better. Because if you show up every single day and you 100 punch it in the mouth, there's no way that you're not going to get better. And if you're a middle and she's a middle and she's sitting there slacking and she sees you bussing, right? That's different these days, okay? All right? You understand what I'm saying? No cap. That's different, okay? Right? And she sees you working, then she's going to either do what? She's either going to be found that she's sus, right? Okay? We can keep it going all day long, right? Or she's going to step up and she's going to get better. And now when she gets better, you're going to look at her and go, whoa, what's happening, Captain? Right? And that's how you collectively get better. That's it. Because when we're in batting every single day, right, we know in here, right now, today, everybody goes, yeah, she's top nine. She's going to be in the lineup. I, I think I'm 11th or 12th. If I, coach said if I keep, no, okay? Every day when I go into the cage, there's 36 girls in this room, and if you're a hitter, you're the best hitter on the team because I'm stepping into the cage to be the example. Girl, watch this. You ain't ever seen no cage work like this, right? Boom. Okay, that's it. And I'm going in there with intentional effort. I'm not just do 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 Ah, this is fun. Okay, 10. I got 10. Okay, I can go back now. No, right? I want 10. Boom, three to the left, three up the middle, three to the right. Okay, and a butt. I'm going with intentional effort. What are my goals? Somebody pull out your journal where you've written down everything you want to do this season, every goal that you have for yourself. Who wants to be an All-American? Okay, Whopper wants to be a cheeseburger, but it ain't really the same. You understand what I'm saying? It takes intentional effort, hard work. Right? It does. You can't just show up and say, I want to be an All-American. And then I say, if you're not the best in your position, put your hand down and you go, he must have been talking to me. I ain't really that good, but I'm going to be an all No, no, that ain't. No, no. This is what I'm talking about. How do we change the mindset? How do we get inside our own brain and say, you know what? I want to be a champion. I want to level up. I want to turn it up. I'm going to be able to work hard with intentional effort and be the example. Just saying. Give it a try. You might just win. All right, cool. Uh, let's do this. Uh, you should have, I need this one. On the second page, booyah. Maybe. Okay, we're going to go to the third page because we're going to end the first one. Boom. All right, anybody need five? Anybody got to use the restroom, take a quick break? Anybody? All right, we're all good. We're going we're gonna to go through section two, and then we are going to take a 10-minute break, right? So what time is it? 720. 7.20. So this will take me about 20 minutes or so. Then we'll take a 10-minute break. Then we'll get our last 45 minutes in, and then it'll be time to take a two-hour drive home. All right. Cool. So we're going to talk about goal setting. We were just talking about uh, having a journal and a goal set journal. If you don't have a book, where you write down what's going on in your game, where you're at, what you're doing, what your goals are, where you want to go. Do you really have goals or do you have thoughts? Right? Because the little engine that could said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Still not sure if he did. Right? Because I, I couldn't find the end of the story. So you have to have, I would recommend highly, Getting, I mean, you can just do a plain old 99 cent notebook. Today is September 18th. This is what I did today. This is how I felt. This is the adjustments I made. This is what I'm working on tomorrow, right? Because it's important. There's so much going on in your life right now between home, school, work, sports, season, life, 
class, all that. It's hard to remember all that, right? And then I'm in practice and coach is telling me, do this, do this, do this. Then I go to class, then I do this, then I go out. Oh, oh and I saw y'all probably in trouble out here on a Friday night. I done passed like three things that had cows out in front and looked like they danced with boots around here. So I'm just saying all these distractions around here can be really hard to get by. All right. So if you're on page two, you should see or page three. You should see something that says smart goals. Are we all on that page? S-M-A-R-T. My mama said I'm smart. OK. No. All right. Cool. At least I am a fool and I keep it fun. Right. Like at least it's not boring. Okay, so smart process, right? Has anybody ever heard of a smart goal process? You have? Okay, very good. I mean, it's all pretty basic, but if, how many of you actually use it? Okay, very good, very good, very good, very good, cool, right? Because I'm not very smart, and before I learned about it, I was just winging it, right? And it, 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 it can work, but it's just so much harder. So what is the smart process on goals? I want to be specific. Not Pacific, right? We can cross the ocean. We're just not going to name it, okay? So clearly define your goal. What do I want to do, right? As a team, what have we defined as a team goal? Natty. Natty, okay. Natty, okay. I mean, is that really it? Listen, listen, we are. Make it to conference. Make it to conference. Short term goal. Okay. I got it. Look, look, this is what I love. She's like Natty. They're like, no. No, no, no. We're going to be here, right? Okay, all right, so let's talk about that. Who agrees with the thought process of, hey, it's day one, we need a natty? Okay, it's okay, listen, listen, I, I've spent a lot of time on islands by myself. It's okay, right? It's okay, right? Who agrees with the thought process of, hey, listen, we just need to get to conference and then we'll regroup and go from there? Okay, so a lot of one game at a timers. Okay, I got it. Right? You can't win the second game without winning the first, right? Okay. Right? And there's collectively as a team, you have to figure out where you are, right? Because as a group, it sounds like, hey, we want to go conference, right? And she's like, okay, that's cool. Two, four, six, eight, who do you appreciate? Conference great, conference great, go conference. But but I'm over here preparing for a natty, so y'all keep working, right? And that's okay, right? You can have the short arrow. Right? Because the short arrow is going to get you the short goal. What do I want in the here and now? Okay, last year I batted 325, right? So right now my short goal is I want to make sure that my batting is where it needs to be so that when season comes up, I'm producing more, right? I want to make sure that I'm attacking the goals that coach has given me here for the fall season so I'm prepared. The long goal is I'm a freshman, right? I want to, I want to work in order to break into the lineup this year. But by the time my junior year comes around, I want to be in line to be an All-American. Okay, it's a long-term goal, right? But it's a goal that you can't just show up and see what happens when you get there. You have to start preparing for those kind of goals now, right? So I want to clearly define the goal. Give me an individual goal that somebody has for themselves. Go ahead. Being nicer to myself. Hey, okay. So what, tell me about that. What does that mean? Yeah. If it happens, if it's happen, I'm going to fail. But I just need a better mindset of that's okay. It's yeah. Be okay. It's got to be okay, right? Right? Because a 3-0, a 4-pitch walk, girl, I don't know what world you live in. That ain't okay, right? Uh, but we're going to work through it, right? The thought process of it being okay for you to move on is what's okay, right? Because the next pitch, if I'm thinking about that 4-0 walk, now I've got five. Now I've got six, now I've got seven, now I've got eight, now I've got Coach Todd, now I've got my catcher, now I've got everybody telling me it's gonna be okay, now I need a reset, now I need to go back, right? So if, if have you walked somebody before and then you struck somebody out, right? And then you won a game, right? So that walk doesn't mean that you are a terrible pitcher, right? Because in this game, can we not walk three, still get three out and nobody scores? Yeah, buddy, they made it so we had a little bit of a cushion. Right. But we don't want to do that because they also made it to where when you call bunt, somebody misses a sign, hits a home run and they score three runs. Right. That happened. Conference game. Since she wants to bring up conference. Right. I give Sailor the bunt sign. She looks at me and goes. 
bop, hit the ball about 290 feet. And I'm like, and I actually said to her, yo, you missed the side. She's like, whatever, get off me. <laughs> that was fun. All right, very good. So I want it to be measurable. How can I track my progress? A goal that's not written down, a goal that is not clearly defined cannot be tracked. So if I'm not tracking the goal, how do I know that I'm making progress or that I'm not making progress and still going backwards? So I have to have a way to be able to track my progress. Again, if that's a hitting, throwing, running, timing, metrics thing, easy. I'm a 2.9, I wanna be a 2.8. Get with the strength and conditioning coach, learn how to round a base the right way, clear my mindset to trust myself, believe in my body. I just took a 10th of a second off, now I'm a 2.8. They've done it on laser, I've tracked it, boom, goal achieved. But if I eat three bags of Cheetos, take three weeks off, decide not to keep working as hard, now I'm right back to that 3.0 because goals are only achieved as long as we work on them. Why have I been here for an hour and I just saw Talia? <laughs> and she's the libero. It doesn't make any sense. All right. Hi, T. How you doing? She's like, this is why I didn't want you to see me. That's nah, all good. Achievable. Is the goal realistic? Right? It's realistic for me to jump on stage. It's not realistic for me to dunk a basketball. I got the name, not the game. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? It's an unrealistic goal. So if I set that I want to dunk a basketball, unless somebody brings me an assisted device like a trampoline or a boost, it's not an achievable goal. So it's not something I'm going to set for myself. Right? Like you all, I want to hit 800. OK. OK. Cool. You keep working on that. And when you end up at the sports therapist, tell me why. Because it's unachievable. You're putting so much pressure on yourself for something that cannot happen, okay? So I wanna clearly define my goal. I wanna know how I'm gonna track progress. Is the goal realistic? How does it relate to your overall performance? Am I spending time on something that I don't need to work on? Uh, is it going to make me better? Is it going to make the team better? What is the short, medium, and long range effect of the work that I'm doing in for this goal? Does it make sense to put all this time and effort into it? And then set a deadline to achieve it, right? Saying that I want to write a book is great, but if my timeline for that is 2050, it doesn't matter, right? I'm giving myself 30 years to do something I could do in a year. So when I'm setting goals, like seriously, if you use this, I'm sure you find that your goals, that you track them, your progress happens a little bit easier, or, you find that your goal does not. Have we ever set a goal and we're like, mm, I'm gonna get that and we didn't? Yeah, right, sometimes they're just not achievable. Sometimes, check this out, <laughs> everybody's gonna tell you you can't do this, but it's true. Sometimes we change our mind. Right, sometimes you just change your mind and sometimes you just say, you know what? what I've been going for, what has been stressing me out, what I've been doing, what I've been working on, the path I've been going, right? I can take you back to 2015. I had been in the United States Navy for 16 years. 16 years, I was four years away from retiring, right? If I lived to be 75, the total overall amount of that retirement would have been just north of $4 million, right? But life gave choices, right? And life is an exchange. In order to do that, they wanted me to move all the way on the other side of the country, give up a whole bunch of things, change a whole bunch of things about my life for one thing. So I decided to walk away, I decided to make a change. I decided that even though I had been doing this and it had changed my total life, it was okay to change my mind and move along a, a path. Right? Has anybody ever like been to a swimming pool and you went up and you were, or even the ocean and you're like, whoo, girl, that's cold. Ain't nobody going in there. Anybody? Right? Yeah, you had to chill. You're like, uh-uh. Hey, you go. You let me know how it is. I'll get, I got you, girl. We'll do a TikTok. Go ahead. You got it. Right? Okay. But anybody just be like, psh, whatever. Psh, 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 bow and jump in that pool. Right? And you get in and you're like, Whoa. All right, let's go, girl. And now you're right in it. It doesn't matter anymore because your body is acclimated. Your mind's gotten used to it. You got over the fear. It was no big deal, 
right? Anybody like when you leave home, you get the little butterflies, you get the little fear in your stomach, right? Or some of y'all are just like, no, get out of here. I've been playing ball around you for 12 years. I want to go practice without you in my back pocket, right? No, just her. Yeah, she's she over there like, yeah, yeah, that's me. I want to meet your daddy. I want to sit down and we need to do a Zoom together, me and him. I probably have, huh? Oh, God. Okay. Timmy. All right, cool. We're going to move past. Hey, Jordan, we're just going to put that all over. Just put that in big boat, Tim Bellamy. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> Look, she has no shame, too. She's like, you just take pitchforks. Just take pitchforks. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I, I've been to a few tournaments. All right, let's keep going. I'm, I've turned pages. I've, I've turned the page of time onto the next page of the lesson. All right, so the next page you should see says uh, short-term goal, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. So between now and the Zoom, because we're going to talk about it, and if you want to start now while I'm talking, you can. What is a short-term goal? Somebody give me, a, a, so you said be nicer to yourself, right? Somebody, that's a short and a long-term goal, right? I just don't want to be like, hey, girl, today you're good, and next week be like, what's wrong with you? You don't want to do that, right? Is it hard to talk good about yourself? Yes. Is it? Yes. It is, right? Why? Why is that so hard? If, if I can look at her, right, and I can say, hey, you're beautiful. You're a progress of your work. I got your back. Keep working. I see you working hard every day. Why do I then look at myself and go, you're, okay, she said, yeah, well, thank you. I, if she just called me ugly. We're not going to, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm, she's, she's called me worse in the four years I've known her. It's okay. Um, best thing she's ever called me? Coach. Oh, we just had a moment. Oh. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought messing with you. I have no idea what I was just talking about. What was I talking about? Short term, sure. We'll go with that. Who's got a short term goal? Because I got a short term memory. Go ahead. Be nicer to myself. Okay. I'm not doing, making any mistakes, but it's okay. Yeah. Right, so there I was. I got the thought back when you said that, right? So, so be nice to yourself. That's what I was saying. Why is it so hard for us to look at ourselves and say, you hold value, you've worked hard, right? I believe in you. I know tomorrow's going to be a better day. Because let me ask you a question, seriously. If you've survived the worst day you've ever experienced, raise your hand. Right. Everybody's alive in this room. So no matter what's happened to you in life, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, right? Whether you hit the ball, whether you struck out looking, whether you had great parents, whether you had bad parents, whether you had a great life, whether you struggled and you barely made it here. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you would have survived the worst things that have ever happened to you. So after that, the only thing left to do is heal, deal, and be a banana peel, right? And keep sliding everywhere you need to go. Makes no sense, but it sounds fun, right? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's it. Because anything else, you're holding on to something, right? Okay, you guys are still all here under 24 years old, right? For the most part, right? Well, guys, let me tell you something. Let's, let's, let's take, come off the field for a second, right? Most people spend their whole life trying to fix what happened to them under the age of 24. From zero to 24, these things happen. Things we can't control. Childhood, this, that, and the other. All these crazy things that get us to a certain point in life. And then after that, you get conscious control and it's no longer on life. Because life's hard. Would you agree? Right? Even if you grew up in, in Beverly Hills in a rich mansion and your daddy's a doctor and your mom's a lawyer, life's still hard. I don't care what anybody says. Each avenue of life comes with its own pressures, its own problems. My life was wild. I saw things all over the place. My son, not so wild, but still has his own demons and his own things and his own life and his own problems that he works through, right? So life is what happens when we're planning something else. So how you deal with that determines your level of success, those adjustments that you're able to make. So short-term goal, I want to be better to myself. I want to be nicer to myself, right? All of you, would you, would you, anybody not have that goal? Like, you're good. Like, I love myself. This is me. This is real. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, right? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Say it again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
right? Right. I, I, love, I love the honesty, right? Like, I, I'm literally, she's, she's, like, she's like this. Hold on. Hold on. She's like this. Hey, girls. <laughs> hey, I ain't worried about a batting uh, position. I'm hurt. I ain't worried about throwing. I'm hurt. Did, is that dude bringing tacos? Like, what's he doing? Right? Like, she's good, right? But I love, I mean, all jokes aside, right, to be able to just stand up in a room or sit, you know, talk in a room of other players and be able to say, I love myself. I'm not, because, I mean, we're all being funny, but I'm sure you're a competitor. I'm sure you'd rather not be hurt. I'm sure you'd rather be playing and maybe not. Maybe you really enjoy sitting on your eye. I have no idea. But I'm sure as a competitor, if you played this game long enough, you want to be in the game. Right, so, so even though we're, we're here, she's got enough confidence to say, yeah, I do love myself. I am working on what I need. But then I wouldn't be a coach if I didn't hold you accountable because we're all joking about sitting on your ass. But injuries are the easiest time to get better because you have nothing to do but sit on your ass and study and study and look at film and study and work on things that you can work on. I don't know what your injury is, but if it's a leg, I can literally sit here with a tennis ball, bounce and field, bounce and field, bounce and field. I can throw a ball up against the wall and I can get hand eye coordination. I can sit there and squeeze a rope and, hand, and fix my grip strength and do all that, right? We can sit here and build a whole injury plan that'll make you the best softball player in the world. And the only thing we have to do when you get back on the field is not work on your physical side, but the biggest problem that all of you have when you come back from an injury is fear of re-injuring and trusting my body again, right? Because I used to just, right? I did that. I ran into the wall. I used to just do all that, right? And now it's, hey, I don't care. She's safe at first, but I ain't going to the hospital, right? That's what happens, right? <laughs> right? Like, it is what it is, so we throttle back. Again, I can only speak off situations I've seen in life. My daughter, outfield, coming in for a short ball over shortstop's head. Shortstop dives, has a face mask on. Jesse gets hit right here in the collarbone with a, with a hard, like two rams going at each other. Cracked her collarbone in six different places. Was out of the game for four months. Came back, and one of the best outfielders that I've ever seen, it took her a year, almost a year, maybe even a little longer, in order to be able to go... I can dive and this ain't gonna break, right? So it's all getting back into the flow. So short-term goal, feel better about myself, right? Wanna, wanna look at myself and feel better, right? Wanna get through injuries and do all of those things. So even that, right, I wanna feel better about myself. Everything comes back to intentional effort because when you get that, if you strike out, right? Okay, boom, I struck out. And as you're walking back to the dugout, you can do what you've always done and go, oh, okay, I had that one. No, that was outside. I can't believe he called that, right? Okay, you can do all that, all these things that we say to ourselves, or you can apply intentional effort and go, I can't, that's all right, by the time I get to the dugout, it's over and done with, I'm gonna get back, I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna cheer because I get another at bat and coach believes in me. That's it, it's the difference between letting a piece of punctuation control your life, right? That apostrophe is killer. It holds on to the T, and that apostrophe T changes everything in your mind. I can't, I won't, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I shouldn't. By apostrophe, I can, I will, I shall, I must, right? It's literally one little piece of punctuation. You drop it and everything in your mindset changes. I can hit this pitcher. I can work all week long in order to give it my best effort and no one has outworked me this week and I know what the film on her is and I know what everybody in the conference is saying and I might not get her, but she is gonna get my absolute best effort because I can work hard. What's the difference? And if you go 0-3, but you worked all week, you worked all season, you gave it everything you got, then you let the cards fall where they may. And you walk away going, Coach, I gave it absolutely everything I had. If there's something that I can improve on this week, please let me know. And he goes, you know what? I seen you work. You slid. You followed the commands. You did what you needed to do. You got the ball down. You, you, you did everything you could. 
Now we go back into the lab with intentional effort and we work to get better. Because anything else is crying over spilled milk, right? Worrying about what you can't fix, not controlling. You're working on controlling things you can control. Cliche saying, control the... Come on, right? Like since you were 10. Control the controllables. Get the ball in. Do what you got to do. Stop holding the ball. How about this one? Be louder. Never understood it. Never understood it. Somebody would yell across the field and go be louder. And you over there screaming at the top of your lungs. They just can't hear you because they're 50 feet away. All right. I'm just saying. All right. So an example of a goal. Improve stamina by completing a focus, strength, and conditioning program. Right? It's just an example. What are your goals? I want to get a better hitter. I want to be better in my mindset. I want to give myself forgiveness. I want to be able to control the drop ball. I want 80% of my change-ups to hit for spots. What are my specific targeted goals? This week, if you do anything when you walk out of this and we talk in two weeks, what are your goals? My goal was to get a college scholarship. Great, you've done that. Congratulations. You are now at the bottom of the mountain that was looking you up since you were 14 years old. Now that is the bottom. Now you're looking up at the college one. If you're a senior, you're looking up at what's next. Where do I go from here? Right? Because that's a whole another topic. Right? That's where I'm at now. Right? That's where Coach Mike's at right now. When the game ends, we now watch you go through something you're not even thinking about yet. Right? Because that whole little thing they put on Facebook, one day you'll have no one to take to practice anymore. Bro, that's real. <laughs> I'd be crying. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I'd be like, ugh. And then, and then you'll see me post on Facebook, anybody holding practice tonight? I want to come practice. Right, Mike, you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. Right? Anyways, man, the game ends. Understand one day you're going to take your last pitch. You're going to field your last ball. You're going to swing your last swing. You're going to get your last dugout visit. You're going to get your last uh, circle visit. You're going to have your last throw down. You're going to slide into base for the last time. And the crazy thing is you're not even going to know that it's the last time. Right? So my point is, right, and I'm not trying to upset you, but my point is while you're here, though, knowing that, give it all of it. Right? Knowing that one day you're going to be sitting here going, there's only one left. Am I playing today, coach? Mm. Right? Be that one that gets the last one and you don't. It is what it is. Life is hard. Reality is hard. Right? All of this, right? You all think that this is preparing you for natties and conference championships and all that. Right? That's, that's what his job is, right? Is to continue to win, build great people, build characters, build leaders. Right? This is preparing you for when you take the last pitch and you have to walk in and you're now one of 25 applying for one accounting position, one nursing position, one mechanic position, one engineering position. And everything that you've done to this point now carries you into that room because life literally is a 3-2 count. What you feel in your stomach, the stress you feel in that moment, right? The anxiety you feel as she steps on the rubber, as she puts her hands together, as that hand, foot comes back or rocks back or whatever it does, as she takes that leap and that ball's coming at you. This is all life. This is job interviews. This is parenting. This is school. This is paying bills. This is getting a mortgage. It's all a three, two count. If you think that that butterfly in your stomach that applies when we step onto the field, that's the same feeling you get to in life. So be nicer to yourself because it's a long road, right? Give yourself grace and forgiveness because the world is going to beat you down enough. The world is going to take everything from you, give it back to you and see if you really wanted it and then it's gonna take it again. So being kind to yourself is important. Giving yourself grace is important. Having resilience to be able to push through tough moments are important. Having goals so that I can level up and get to the next step of my process is important. Tracking them to make sure that I know that my progress is happening is important. 
right? And then finally holding myself accountable to that process and adjusting my sales and goals along the way, also important. Questions so far? Nope, good to go? Cool. So you've written down your goals. How, uh, somebody tell me this, based on what we talked about intentional effort, based on what we talked about goals, how will applying intentional effort to a goal setting process improve whatever your goal is? Come on, somebody, right here in the front. Well, say your goal is to be nice to yourself. Yep. And you're just saying, you're good, like you're good. And you just say it, you have to believe it. Yep. Because then if you're just saying it, then you don't mean it. And you're not actually having an impact on yourself. I love it. Yeah, intentional effort. Be where you are. Very good. All right, let's take a little 10-minute break. Shake it up a little bit. I'm going to get some water. Jordan and I are going to go outside and take some images out front before the sun goes completely down, and then we'll come back for the last section. Ah, just one. Yeah, thank you.